Acts chapter 16 is a very familiar chapter for you. It's called the Philippian Jailer. Why Paul and Silas was put into prison. And it's a phenomenal story when you get into the reasons and the whys that Paul and Silas were put into prison. It starts in chapter 1, or verse 1 in chapter 16, where a young lady by the name of Lydia gave her life to Christ. And after they encountered Lydia, and they, Lydia gave her life to Christ, they encountered another woman that was possessed by the devil. And they would, the, the demon-possessed woman would, would follow Paul and Silas around, and they would, she would just yell at everybody, say, say, these guys are preaching God. These guys are preaching the one true God. And that went on for a week. And you would think, well, why would they stop her from doing that? Because what they wanted to do in that time, they didn't want persecution. What they wanted is infiltration. And if they could get the woman to infiltrate the church with demonic activities, it could change the whole outcome of what Paul and Silas was trying to do. Paul saw that, and after a week, he said, get out. And the demon left her. But when the demon left her, her handlers got mad at Paul and Silas. And their handlers, because she could not make them any more money, they carried them into prison, into the inner prison. They were mad. They went to the magistrates and said, we can't make any money anymore, and these two guys are causing great harm to our city when these guys were trying to bring God into the city. See, sometimes when somebody does something that they don't like, they will do whatever it takes to cause havoc within their life. And this lady that was a demon-possessed woman, the demon was cast out, but those that handled her, they were very upset. Let's look at, at chapter 16. Let's start in verse 16, and then we'll get into some points. Now what happened is when we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master's much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us that the way of salvation, and this is what she did for many days. But Paul was greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that the hope of the prophets were gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace and to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for the Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitudes rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them in prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet into stocks. That's very important. The jailer, an old, crested soldier. And one day, he was maybe in charge of hundreds or maybe even thousands of soldiers. But his life is now relegated down to be a prison guard. That was his life, and that was what his life demanded of him. They brought Paul and Silas to him and said, you must secure him. So they not only put him in the prison, they put him in the inner prison. Not only just they put him in that dark dungeon inner part of the prison, they put their feet and in hands in shackles. These guys that just cast out a demon was put into prison because they could not make money off of this woman anymore. They put their hands and their feet in this dark, dungy prison. Have you ever gone to a real dungeon prison? When we were in Mad Madagascar, we went to a deep dungeon. Water all over the place. It was in a cave and water coming down. And these prisoners, they lived in that scenario. It was nasty. It was disgusting. There was no cleanliness at all. And Paul and Silas was serving Jesus, doing what God had called them to do. They were put into prison, not only put in prison, but beaten with rods. Put them into the inner city. 
shackled to a wall. All they were doing was proclaiming the name of Jesus. That's all they were doing. And sometimes in our life, we say, we say, say well, I'm just trying to honor God. Why would all of these things take place with, I'm just trying to proclaim, I'm just trying to share the message, I'm just trying to do what I am supposed to do. But this guard, this prison guard, this crusty old man, that he had one job to do, and that's to make the prisoner's life miserable. And he did. He did. He put them in the inner prison, shackled their hands. But then, something great takes place. I love it when things take place. When all of life is falling apart, how and where do you go? See, I, I put myself in that scenario. If all of this stuff was taking place, I'd get mad at God. I'd, I'd say, God, I'm doing what you asked me to do. Why am, I, why am I put into prison? Why am I doing this? I would set sour and soak in my prison cell. Somebody say amen. If all that, I mean, you're not going to say, hey, praise Jesus, I get to be in prison. Most people aren't going to do that. But Paul and Silas, you know what they were doing? At midnight, they were singing praises to God in front of all of the other prisoners. Wow. They weren't just sitting over there getting mad. They weren't wondering why God would do this to them. They weren't wondering why should they have to go through this. They were sitting in a prison, singing and praising God. And look at what takes place. This is awesome. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. You know what that means? They were preaching through singing to prisoners that deserved to be in prison. They were singing and praying, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loosed. Not just Paul and Silas. It said everyone's chains were loosed. In the deepest the inner part of the prison. Because they were worshiping and proclaiming the name of Jesus in song. The prisoners were all around listening to them. That earthquake was right at that prison cell. God was listening to Paul and Silas sing. You know what? That changes the way you worship, isn't it? If you knew that God was listening to you and you were in trouble and you could sing praises to God and God would listen and he would shake your world. Man, I think we'd sing a little bit more. I think we'd pray a little bit more because Paul and Silas knew that they were in prison but they didn't do anything wrong. And if God put them in prison, God was going to take care of them while they were in prison and God was going to take care of their family. Ground shook. The bounds were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. It was a dagger. And he knew that if he lost his prisoners, his life as he knew it was over. He thought, my life, my box, my family, my surroundings would never be okay anymore. And sometimes in our life when we are going through something so devastating that something happens and we have no idea what to do and how to turn, sometimes we're like that prisoner guard. We pull out our dagger and we say, I don't know if life is worth living. But Paul said, stop, don't do it. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Not just Paul and Silas. The prisoners that deserved to be there, they were still there. Their shackles were off. Their doors were open. But no one left the prison. They were all there. Then he called out for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Now the guard that bound him, that beat him with, with, with rods, shackled him to a stone, was now falling down at the face 
and the feet of Paul and Silas. How God can turn everything around. What we thought was our misery, God can turn it into our victory. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, the most important question of the story. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The prison guard knew that Paul and Silas wasn't just two men stuck in the center of a prison. These two men were men from God. And they're praising and they're praying to God. And God listened. And God changed the outcome of their life. And this old crusty prison guard looked at them and fell at his feet and said, What must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And you and your household. It wasn't just about him. Paul and Silas, when they proclaimed the message by singing praises, they maybe saved some prisoners. Now Paul and Silas are saying, this is how you get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your household. We're going to tell everybody that we know. We're going to let you know what takes place. And they spoke the word of the Lord to them and all who were in his house. And they took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all of his family were baptized. Now when he brought them into the house, he sat before them. And he rejoiced, having believing in God with all of his household. This old crusty soldier looked at Paul and Silas after he beat him with rods and blood all over their back and in their face. Then they confronted him. Those that sometimes hurt us the most are the ones that we can communicate the most to. And he said, what must I do to be saved? What, what must I do to have what you have? I, 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 if all this stuff was going on in my life, I, I, I would get mad. I would curse God. I'd be so frustrated. But you guys are singing. You guys are praising. You guys are nice. You're not cursing us out. You're not causing us problems. The Bible says at midnight, their voices were lifted up to God, singing praises and prayers to him. And when God heard it, the earthquake shattered that prison. Shackles broken off. Prison doors were open. This was not just a simple little earthquake from fracking in Oklahoma. This, this was an earthquake designed by God to do something supernatural. And when God wants to get into your life in a supernatural way, there's not a barrier one that can come in this place. You may be in the deepest, darkest dungeon in your life. You may be scared to death. Your family may be falling apart. It may be in your eyes, deep, dark center of hell. And what do you do? Can we sing praises to God in the midst of of our deepest, darkest story. Because when we can, when we can sing praises to Him, God can show up. See, I believe sometimes God does things through us to find out who we truly are. So, my first point is very simple. Even prisoners can worship. Even prisoners can worship. And sometimes we are prisoners. Maybe not because we deserve it, Maybe because of a situation or something's going on in our life. But even prisoners can worship. See, because I, I liked what I said in the baptismal tank. This church, Christianity, do you know what it is? It is God loving sinners. It is God forgiving sinners. It is not a place where... Well, if you, if, you, if, you ne if you never have a problem, if you've never sinned, Glenville's for you. Guess how many people we'd have in church today? I'd be preaching to myself. I'd be up here just all by myself. Just, nobody else would listen to me. But you know what? Church is not for the holy. Church is for the redeemed. 
And how do you get redeemed? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. They were sinners. They came to know Jesus and now they've been redeemed. That is exactly what we need to do. And we need to remember, we may be a prisoner. We may deserve to be a prisoner. But we can still proclaim the name of Jesus. We can sing shouts to him and love him because we should be prisoners. I loved what Paul and Silas did. They sang and they prayed and all of the prisoners heard them. Your influence changes other people's lives. See, what we think is maybe what we do only affects my life. But what you do affects other people's lives. Prison would have no more captivity over them. That prison dungeon couldn't hold them. They may be in the deepest, darkest cell in that prison. But God was with them. You may think that you're in a situation right now that even God can't hear you. Where in the world is he? What in the world is going on? But through our spirit, when we lift up our names, and we lift up his name through our voices, God hears. Even prisoners can rejoice. I loved what it said. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Have you ever just sat and listened to somebody praise and worship? When somebody just sings and they don't care that people's around. Maybe they raise their hands and, you know, we're sitting in the back. And I'm an old Baptist, okay? Where I went to Bible college, you raise your hand, that's a sin. This is, this is, this is about, this is, you can raise your hand to hear. Okay, anybody like that? But if you open your hands and you do this, you must be Pentecostal. You, you must not be a Baptist if you do this. You do the holy hand raising up here, or maybe you can close your eyes and, whatever the case is, but when somebody really could care less what anybody else thinks, and their song and their voice is to who? God. God is the audience, and all we are are his instruments. We don't care. I care because if I sang out loud, you guys would part the Red Sea and nobody would be around me. Amen, Amen I, know. I, I know. I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. I have no problem with that. I just heard you sing too, so I wouldn't be talking. But we can praise God in the midst of our storm. The second thing is we can do this. All is not lost. Have you ever thought in the midst of your storm that everything, everything is over? We shared a little bit last week about the storms. And we said sometimes in those storms we go to worst case scenarios in a hurry. We think everything is over. We think everything is lost. We think there's no more hope. But in the midst of a prison cell, Paul and Silas changed everyone's life. All is not lost when we do things for God. And the keeper of the prisoner awakened from his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled. What's the key word? Supposing. Worst case scenario. I thought something took place. And sometimes when we think something takes place, we put it in our brain that it did take place. And the prison guard was ready to kill himself until Paul said, Stop! We're not gone. We're here. You do not have to harm yourself. We're all here. We are all here. In, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, it says this, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? within you, whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you are bought with the price. So glorify God in your body. When we understand that I may be going through something, but your body and your mind and your spirit, it's not yours. You've been bought by the price of that blood that Jesus sacrificed. And when we look at my body, when you look at your body, you look at what you're going through, we have to say, you know what? Before I can do anything or before I should do anything, I first need to know that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God works within my life. That's why he says, Paul says, we're all here. No one left. We're all okay. We're going to be okay. 
Jailers were almost sadistic and cruel individuals, specifically hired for a job, and that job is to make your life miserable. Anybody have anybody like that around your life? You must be a jailer, man, because you're, you just make my life miserable. And sometimes when you look at a jailer and you look at his outward appearance and his cruelty, but yet when God changes even the hardest core individual and God changes their life, they, became, they become somebody that God can use. Whatever your story is, whatever your life is, you know Paul and Silas says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. Even the meanest individual. Even this cruel, cruel prison guard. Paul and Silas said, it's not even about you. I'm going to pull at the heartstrings of something that's very important. And if you have any kids, you know the heartstring of any man or of any woman is their kids. And he said, don't kill yourself. Don't harm yourself. Because what I'm going to share with you, I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to give it to your kids. And listen to what happened then. They walked out of the prison. They went over to the jailer's house. And the very sores, the, the, where they were beaten by rods, the bloody body, they laid out. And the guard started cleaning them up. And then, after they were clean, the guard and the guard's family, they went to water and they were baptized. What is all that about? Their first obedient step of following Jesus is this. Even if I'm put to death. You know, the prisoner guard, he was about ready to kill himself because... They were ready to flee. But now he sees, I don't have to kill myself, but I am willing to sacrifice. I am going to follow Paul and Silas to the point I am going to get baptized. And I don't care what anybody says. They can throw me in prison. They can do whatever they want to do with me. I am willing to follow Paul and Silas because they are the real deal. So they went out and they got baptized. He and his family. That is true commitment to Jesus. That's why when we baptize, it's not just getting wet. It's not just look at what I'm doing. It's I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I don't care if there's 500 people in here. I don't care what you think. What I care about, what God thinks. And I want everyone to know that I'm a follower and a dedicated member of God's family. That's what baptism is all about. And we need to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Not for any other reason to let them know I'm a new start. I'm a new child. I am not afraid of this world. This jailer was not afraid of death anymore. And he said this, I have a new purpose in life. And that new purpose in life is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And when we can be a follower of Jesus Christ, it changes, it changes everything that we ever do. And then an invitation requires one thing. An invitation requires one thing. It's critical. That you understand one thing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved. Here's, not, here's what it doesn't say. Follow Paul and Silas. Go to the church that I'm starting. If you go to that church that I'm starting with Lydia. You go to that church. You'll be saved. It doesn't say that. And then say, you find a good preacher, and you'll be saved. There's one thing you must do, and that's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we take our life, and we can bring it down to a simple, simple, simple scenario. What's your life all about? What, what, why do you do the church thing? What's it all about? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind. But now I see. I don't know what all has taken place with me. But I do know this. There was a time in my life that I was miserable. There was a time in my life I had no hope. There was a time in my life I had no spirit and I really didn't know what to do. But somebody or something took place within my life that gave me an opportunity to see Jesus. 
And when I gave my life to Christ, it changed everything. There's only one thing. It's not the church you go to. It's not the preacher you listen to. It's the Jesus that loves you. There's one thing that you must do. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And not only you, but also your household. When you can lead your household to Jesus. When you know that your household is believers in Christ. When you can baptize you and your children. They know that you're children of God. It changes everything. This rusty, mean, old prison guard. On that day, everything changed. Everything. Is there times in your life where you feel like you're stuck? You feel like you're stuck in a prison. And maybe there's a guard that's guarding you, that's making your life miserable. And maybe you want to sing songs to God, but maybe you feel like God is distant. You really don't even know if he hears you, or could be honest, you don't even know if he's alive. Is there even a God? Those questions. I, I, I've done the church thing. I've tried God before and it just didn't work out. Paul and Silas said this. There's only one thing that you have to do. Whether you believe it or you know it or you think you know something is not the issue. The issue is when you give Jesus a chance, when you allow Jesus to come into your heart and into your life, it changes everything about your life. But sometimes we have to say, it's not about me, it's about him. And sometimes we have to get out of the way so God can get in our life. Paul and Silas, at midnight, after being beaten by rods into the inner prison, shackled to a concrete, to a stone wall, singing praises to God. It wouldn't get any worse than that for me. But it didn't stop them. In the midst of your worst day, your worst scenario, can you talk to God? Or do you get mad at God? Because when we're praising, God is in charge. And here's what God does. He always shows up in the midst of your biggest issue. Always. It may not be the way you want it may not be what you're looking for. But he's going to show up in the midst of your biggest issue. If we praise. And if we pray. And we say, Lord, I need you. Paul and Silas were praying. God showed up. They were free. Changed people's lives. They were baptized. The jailer and his family. Because they were not ashamed of Jesus. Now... In your life. I love the story of the Philippian jailer. I love it for a few reasons. Because number one. God showed up. Number two. Paul and Silas were not ashamed. And because of what Paul and Silas did. People's lives were changed. And I'm a firm believer. That when we. The church. Does what we are supposed to do. It will change people's lives. When we as a church. Stand up and proclaim the message. Even in a very difficult time. People will hear about Jesus. What must I do to be saved? And what would that answer be? Believe on Jesus. Period. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shall be saved. 